I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Dr. Joel Premack, the distinguished professor of physics at the University of California, Santa Cruz, a recognized leader in the area of dark matter. Well, I'm glad to be here. What do we expect to see in astrophysics in the few years in the future? Well, uh, we don't know what the universe is made of. We have some idea how the invisible stuff controls the universe, the dark matter and the dark energy. But this is a crazy situation where we know some of the rules for how we can simulate the universe, but we don't really know what this stuff is. And this is most of the universe, after all. So what we're hoping is that we're going to discover the nature of the dark matter. The dark energy is even tougher. But the key to discovering the nature of the dark energy, that's what makes the universe expand faster and faster, is to determine extremely precisely the expansion history of the universe and also how structure grew in the universe, how galaxies formed and clusters and so forth. If we understand the nature of the dark energy, we'll understand the future. And this is something that we can do in the next decade or so. And it's going to require a tremendous amount of computing and a tremendous amount of storage. What are the challenges that you face with IT infrastructure when doing your research? There are two big challenges, uh, computing and data storage and, and transportation. Uh, the computing challenge is that the supercomputers are becoming more and more inhomogeneous. High performance computing used to be simply uh, single processors hooked together, but basically running the same single processor code on many different processors and just spreading the work around. The new computers have multi-core chips with many cores addressing the same memory. And then often they have accelerators, for example, graphic processor units also addressing the memory. The way you have to program these things to be efficient is quite complicated. You have to arrange to have the pipelines of the graphic processor units always filled to get the high speed advantage. And also, they're basically vector machines. They do multiply, add, multiply, add very fast. But you have to only give them that sort of job to do and not the things they do poorly. Those you have to use the cores for. So you have to cleverly design the way you, the architecture of your program to take advantage of the complicated architecture of the machine. And then often you have to spread the work over a number of these nodes. So that makes programming much more complicated than it used to be. We can generate an enormous amount of data, either analyzing huge amounts of data or as output from supercomputer calculations. And it becomes very difficult to analyze the data on the fly. You want to be able to store it and then think about how you're going to analyze it as you, want, as you start to understand the data. And the difficulty is that we can very quickly generate more data than is easy for us to store at the big supercomputer centers. For example, last year we ran a simulation and we stored 7,200 time steps. It was 340 terabytes of data. We dumped it onto their fast disk array, but they only let us keep it there for a few weeks. They said at that point, uh, number one, they would not archive it because it's too many tapes. And they didn't think we were ever going to read those tapes. And they uh, didn't give us time to fully analyze it. So we simply lost it. Uh, we would like to be able to store outputs somewhat longer and uh, at least have a chance to, to uh, give them a little bit more thoughtful analysis. And so having a larger capability for storage is really quite important. How will cloud computing affect research in your field? Well, the cloud is going to give us more flexibility in how we handle large data sets. Let me give you an example. Uh, as head of the High Performance Astrocomputing Center for the entire University of California system, I called together a large number of the leaders in the world in doing high resolution galaxy simulations. And uh, all of the main groups were represented. We had this meeting a few weeks ago at the University of California, Santa Cruz. And we were able to get the entire group to agree to do simulations with the same initial conditions. Uh, we had just 
been able to create the initial conditions in a format that every code could use. This was a tremendous achievement by a scientist at Stanford, Oliver Hahn. He's just going to Zurich now. Uh, and uh, also with help from one of the postdocs at Santa Cruz and also a postdoc at the University of California, Irvine. So it's a, it's a joint operation. But everybody was very impressed that this suddenly became available. This is brand new technology. Also, we got everybody to agree on a lot of the other aspects of the code, the way cooling would be implemented, the way the uh, energetic background radiation would be implemented. And this is partly because we had the world's leading experts at the meeting. And everybody saw that if everyone agreed on this, then we are going to disagree on the way we do a lot of things within the different codes. But at least we'll be able to narrow down the causes of differences in the outputs. And then finally, uh, another new tool just became available for all of the different code outputs, a, a uniform analysis tool, which is going to allow us to analyze all the simulations in the same way. Now, a crucial step is that we have to have a workspace where everybody can share both the inputs and the outputs, together with all of the capabilities of simultaneously analyzing all of the outputs. We're going to compare the simulations at many different time steps. And so, we announced that the UDS system at Santa Cruz is going to be available, and we've set aside up to 100 terabytes just for this project. And so this is a perfect cloud project, because everybody is going to have access to this part of the data system. We'll all get to see each other's data and, and, and see the analyses. And I think this is going to advance the entire field. Uh, at any rate, this is going to be a worldwide collaboration, and uh, I think we're going to uh, learn a great deal in the next year. In order to handle the high volumes and throughput of the experiment, what measures has the High Performance Astro Computing Center taken to improve its storage system's performance? Well, uh, at the University of California, Santa Cruz, we're looking forward to getting a new computer, uh, which will have at least 5,000 cores and many uh, graphic processing units and a fair amount of flash. Uh, this is with money from the National Science Foundation. We just got the grant. And combining that with the UDS system from Huawei, uh, this is going to tremendously increase our computational and data storage capability, and that's exactly the combination we need to analyze data. And as I said, we're going to make this available to uh, people within the University of California system and for some purposes to a worldwide community of astrophysicists. Other than UDS, are there other technologies from Huawei that you're interested in looking at? Well, we want to buy an inhomogeneous computer system that will have several sub-components. There'll be one part, for example, that has a very large RAM per core, because that's very useful for certain kinds of calculations and also for making videos. And we'll have another part that will have graphic processor units and lots of cores addressing the same RAM. And then we'll have other units which are basically just a bunch of uh, individual processors because a lot of people are still running embarrassingly parallel projects. So it has to be uh, an inhomogeneous system that will serve the needs of a variety of users. The way we uh, would like to uh, buy the system now that the money is in hand, we actually have the money and we have the start date of September 1st of 2012. Uh, so we have to move quickly now. We want to first of all, ask a number of vendors to tell us how they think we should put the system together. We're going to specify what the capabilities of the system are, but without specifying the details. And then, after we've been educated by the vendors as to what's available, then we'll do a second round where we're going to have fairly specific specifications, and then we're going to compare vendors head to head to see uh, who's going to give us the best solution. Uh, our experience from doing this a few years ago is that each of those two stages takes about two months. So what we're hoping is that by January of next year, we're going to have a system in place that will integrate very well with our new Huawei UDS system. So what's your opinion about the cooperation between the High Performance Ast Astro Computing Center and Huawei? Well, uh, we're looking forward to using the UDS system we're going to put it into production just as soon as we get our hands on it uh, because we rather desperately need it. 
and uh, we're going to be able to evaluate it uh, in real time. Uh, we're going to be uh, using it very extensively, uh, not just for my own work, but that of many other scientists at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and within the University of California system. Well, that's great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for giving us this wonderful system. <laughs>